impact do you think this will have on Central Illinois? On Central Illinois, well, um, the church will continue to function as we, we have in many ways. I mean, the church uh, goes on, uh, and we have for 2,000 years. Um, I'm talking about the church in general. Here in Central Illinois, uh, we've uh, been functioning for about 160 years. And in that sense, uh, you know, the Pope certainly is our shepherd, our, our leader, and our, our, guider, our guidance. Uh, the, the most um, uh, significant impact, I guess, the Pope has on any diocese, like a diocese of Illinois, is the appointment of your bishop. So uh, it was Pope Benedict XVI that uh, appointed me uh, to be uh, your bishop here in central Illinois in 2010. And as I said in my statement, that it's something that I'm personally grateful for and that I, I'll always remember uh, this particular pope. Uh, in my, whenever I think of Springfield, I'll, I'll think, well, he's, he's the one that uh, appointed me to be the bishop of this diocese. And so I think, um, you know, for the future, uh, it will be very interesting uh, as we await to uh, see who the new pope will be. And um, he will continue uh, to carry on the traditions of his predecessors. And in that sense, I don't uh, expect uh, that there will uh, be anything that will be uh, uh, very radical because that's the nature of our church. We're rooted in a tradition. We're rooted in a faith that we've had for 2,000 years. And so uh, the Holy Father, by his nature, is, is a guardian of that tradition. And, and so that will continue. But, uh, you know, depending where he's from, and I think there's all kinds of possibilities. He could come from anywhere in the world uh, these days. And so uh, that will be fascinating to see how this unfolds. I would not be surprised if the next pope came from outside of Europe. Um, of course, I have, I have no crystal ball and no way of knowing that. Uh, certainly the church in, in Europe is uh, still a very imp important part of our church, but in, in many ways, I think especially now in the 21st century, uh, the church has very much expanded uh, beyond that sphere of European influence. And I, I think we saw a major transition, of course, with the election of Pope John Paul II in 1978 where that broke a centuries-long tradition of having Italian pontiffs. And um, so that kind of broke that mold. Uh, and, and so we had two popes then from outside of Italy, but still within Europe, a Polish pope and a German pope. And I think as we move into now the beginning of the 21st century, uh, we see the church expanding. And in fact, the places in the world where the church is, is growing by leaps and bounds is more in Africa and in Asia and uh, certainly huge numbers of, of Catholics in South America. And so in the sense of, of where's the cutting edge of the growth uh, patterns of the church, uh, I think it's, it's gonna be much more in those areas than it would be uh, in uh, Western Europe or, or even here in North America. I saw the Pope in person last about a year ago at this time when uh, we had what we called the ad limina visit to the bishops of uh, our, our region here in the United States last year, all of the bishops of the United States had their uh, periodic visits with the Holy Father. And so uh, well, we, uh, we went by region. And so our region is Wisconsin and Illinois and Indiana. And um, the way uh, Pope Benedict XVI handled these regional visits was then to break those down in even further into meetings uh, with the bishops of each state. So uh, the Holy Father met with the uh, bishops of Illinois. There were about a dozen of us uh, at that meeting. And um, at the meeting, uh, he was uh, very attentive and listened uh, very carefully. Um, we went around the, the room and each one of the bishops uh, spoke for a couple of minutes and he listened and asked questions uh, of us. But it was also um, very clear that, uh, first of all, he had an extremely demanding schedule. So he had an hour with us, but uh, he was running late because he had a meeting before ours with uh, bishops from another part of the world. And so he came to meet with us, and you have to realize this, this is a big part of what the Pope does, uh, is on a daily basis to be meeting with, uh, with bishops from throughout the world. And uh, that would be an extremely grueling schedule for anybody. The Pope is uh, 25 years older than I am. I, I couldn't imagine myself trying to keep a schedule like that. And so it's very understandable uh, that he would want at this point in, in his life, I think, to take some time uh, to uh, be able to rest and, and to uh, have a little more tranquil uh, retirement, as I say. But it was, it was clear even, even a year ago at this point that um, you know, age was taking its toll on him. And uh, 
that it would be difficult for him to continue with the same level of energy that he had had in the past. Are you at all surprised that this happened right as Lent is about to get underway? And um, I guess what, if anything, will that play in? Um, did it play in the Pope's decision to step down at this time with the demands of that season? And um, how will it affect the, um, you know, not celebration, but the, the marking of the events of Lent in the Vatican? For me, it is a bit of a surprise in, in terms of the timing. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not totally surprised that, uh, that he's taking the step. And in fact, uh, as I've, uh, I've thought about that, you know, and having, as we were talking earlier about having seen him a year ago in the Ad Limina and seeing the, the, the grueling demands on his schedule and his weariness uh, uh, at, at his age uh, for someone 85 going on 86 to continue that, you know, the thought has crossed my mind that he might do this uh, at some point. So in that sense, it's not a total surprise. Uh, the timing is a bit of a surprise. I, I wasn't expecting uh, to be awakened this morning by a reporter from CNN asking me about the Pope's resignation at 5 a.m. this morning, but that's, kind of, that's how I found out. Um, <laughs> and um, so in terms of uh, why now at the beginning of Lent, um, uh, you know, I don't think the Holy Father has answered any, or, or given us any clues to that in terms of, uh, you know, that he's not given any indication of, you know, he didn't suddenly get a diagnosis from the doctors mm -hmm. as far as I know of anything like that. And, and so why, why now? I think he's, he did say that he's been praying about this for a while and, and that uh, this is something that uh, I'm sure that uh, he didn't uh, do on the spur of the moment. Uh, but uh, perhaps it is coupled with the... Uh, the uh, Coming Advent, the coming season of Lent, and the sense of this is a time, um, you know, that we all look to re have personal renewal uh, in our spiritual lives, and maybe he sees this as uh, an opportunity for uh, spiritual renewal for the whole life of the church as well by entering into this process during the Lenten season. These cardinals are they're uh, especially because of the age limit of, of 80 years old, uh, they're active in their roles, and um, so there are some, of course, that are working in Rome. Uh, in the Holy See, but but most of them would be like Cardinal George. They're they're archbishops of their own uh, archdioceses, and so in that sense, they they have the ear of their their people, their priests, uh, other bishops, and so I, I think that uh, most of the cardinals um, will probably be certainly having conversations and asking people, well, what do you think, and what would you recommend? I don't know that it would be so much in, in terms of particular names. But it might be, uh, as we were talking about earlier, like uh, what qualities would you look for? In fact, that's back in 2005, that's really the way uh, Cardinal George asked me about it. It was not, uh, you know, give me a list of names. It was rather, uh, what qualities would you be looking for uh, in a Holy Father? And so that's the kind of uh, input that I, feedback that I gave to him. What qualities would you be looking for in a Holy Father? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> well, I think uh, what's very important for... Um, <laughs> The Holy Father, at this point, we're at the beginning of the third millennium. Uh, we're in an age of uh, um, uh, tremendous um, growth in, in uh, knowledge and information and sharing of information. I mean, Pope Benedict himself uh, just started uh, uh, messaging on Twitter, you know, so I think the, uh, the next Holy Father will be someone who will uh, certainly have to continue to, to be able to use the modern means of, uh, of communication and even Pope Benedict himself recognized that and, and has been speaking frequently uh, recently about using the new media. And uh, because you have to you go back again to the very beginning, the mission entrusted to the church by Jesus Christ was go out and tell the good news. Well, back then it was uh, for Peter and Paul and the other apostles, it was get on a boat <laughs> and go to Athens and go to the Areopagus, you know, where all the learned people sat around and had great thoughts and conversations, and that's how you got the word out. Go to Rome, because that's the center of, of the empire. Um, well, the church is still doing that, so when the printing press was invented, you know, the church began to, to use that, the printing of Bibles and other religious uh, publications. So here we are at the beginning of the 21st century, so the Pope is going to have to be someone, I think, who is a good communicator, media savvy, uh, knows technology, at, at least be aware of it, and we'll have staff will obviously help him with that. He will have to be someone, I think, who has a lot of energy, uh, like Pope John Paul II when he was first elected, because I would think um, there will probably uh, be a, a great demand for people to meet uh, the Holy Father, again, from around the world. And uh, so he'll have to have someone who has the energy and the stamina to be able to do that. 
Obviously, he has to be a man of, of deep faith, uh, of deep devotion and prayer, uh, because um, he is, as a shepherd, he is a role model, and he really uh, has to show us um, how to be good Catholics and, and to lead a billion people uh, throughout the world in doing that.